We're at risk as a company is when all these individuals, all these supervisors, all your divisions, sites, all of your business units are acting differently. You might have ones up here that <laughs> you're just afraid to be around. The most risky, the most at risk, the ones who are going to drive your incident rates up. But then at the same time in your company, you have rates very low. The supervisors that are sources of excellence, who get it, you want to learn from. But the problem is, when you have this much variance, you don't know how to attack your safety problem. It's too random. It's too chaotic. You can't do it. So when you did some of the low-hanging fruit, right, you saw this back in your organization's history, and you knew it needed to get better. What are some of the first things you did? Most likely you started defining your safety policy. Yes? And maybe a discipline policy. And then you looked at the environment and you put up guards. And you might have hired safety officers. You did the stuff that everybody does and you got this improvement. And you went down. So now you've gone from here with all that variance to here. Look what happened. There's less. Now I don't mean to have less dots up here because we laid off employers or anything like that. I just didn't put enough dots on it. But the dots here, there's less variance. You notice there, the performance, the safety performance of your business units, of your divisions, of your different supervisors, of your employees, have now gotten more consistent. And because they're more consistent, now you can look at the data and you can see the outliers. And now you know where to make your interventions. Now you know where to go and make changes. So for example, if here you see the biggest outlier is a newly acquired plant, and you learn that when you get new plants, you make new acquisitions, there are sources of risk. Now you know to plan for that risk. So when a new plant in the future comes along, you have already planned for the different changes that go along. You get ahead of it proactively, so that plant doesn't show that many injuries. Same thing with increases in volume. As your economy improves and your market gets bigger, you're gonna have more and more volume to deal with. And maybe you find when a plant or a division has more volume, that's when their injury rates go up. You see that, you can do something about that. You know it's coming, you can analyze it, you can make sure it doesn't happen again. Same with leadership changes, or who knows, aging workforces. There are many reasons. My point is that when you reduce the variance and everybody's acting similarly and you've achieved this level of performance, because of that, you have an added benefit. And the added benefit is you can see where the outliers are. And you can then analyze why they're a problem and do something about it. But we don't want to stop there. Because my discussion here is going from here down. Why is it that you're plateaued though? A lot of people come to me and they, they, they feel that they've failed. I have failed as a safety manager because we're not showing greater improvement. Anybody here feel like that? You can tell me I'm a psychologist. You want to know at all? <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have the kind of sympathy, perhaps. I'm here to tell you that you're winning. If you're keeping it steady, you are winning. Think of the pressures that are trying to push up that injury rate. Think of them. You feel them every day, don't you? At your site, in your corporation, with people. You have productivity demands. We want more done here with the same amount of people. Pushing it up, trying that, that you can feel when more volume comes in, that is more risky. The environment has more hazards. Or, with our economy in the United States, many companies are going into cost cutting. That happening here in Colombia? Cost cut? No, no cost cutting. A great economy upward. Cost cutting is everywhere. What happens with cost cutting?
cutting. We're taking away some of the, the things that keep people safe. We take away some training. We take away some equipment. We don't update our equipment, etc. And so what do we have? We have it trying to push the rate up. What about retiring professionals? In the United States, it's estimated that 30% of the workforce is going to retire in the next five years. What about here in Columbia? Do you have an aging workforce here? No. So you have a young workforce, perhaps. You have human resources issues that come and go, yes? And those human resources issues will push, try to get more injuries. Aging equipment. You can tell me, right? You can tell me all the threats that are trying to push that number up. And the fact that you are staying level means you've won. Because you're doing the right things to keep it where it is. It's almost like a force field trying to push up and push down. So it's working. But I'm here to talk about what it takes to go from good to great. Collins wrote a book a couple years ago, very popular in the United States, called Good to Great. It's a management book. I suggest it for many people. I work with a nonprofit organization in the United States called the Cambridge Center for Behavioral Studies. And that organization goes and accredits the best behavioral safety programs in the world. Hopefully, I'll get to come and visit one of your companies after you've demonstrated that your safety record is indeed great. And my, my distinct pleasure, my honor to be able to do this is that I get to go and see the great companies who are two to three standard deviations below their industry standard. And I get to see what makes them great. And so when we look at the safety goal here, what we're really looking at is trying to get that second step. And look at the variance there. The greats have processes that everybody follows. The greats have training that is systematic. The greats measure their performance. The greats do a lot of things. And because of that, their work units, their business units, their supervisors, all their employees are doing the same thing. You've now mitigated risk. So that's where we want to be. And if you're there already, below your goal, everybody lined up, I want to talk to you because I want to learn from you. So the rest of this talk is, is what I've learned. Because what's happened over the course of the maturity of your safety program is you've gone through two step functions. Those two step functions are critical to get to where it is, and they're two separate steps. 